Hey guys, welcome back to Electrical Car Repair Life. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel, guys. In today's video, guys, if you're trying to figure out what the resistance for the AC clutch coil, guys, needs to be on Chevy Cruise, guys, we'll share that with you. I think it will also work on Chevy Sonic because many of them share the same engine and many of the components are the same. So this is guys AC compressor and uh, this video guys actually will relate to most of the AC compressor guys. Came out of the 2015 guys Chevy Cruze. Okay, let me show you quick here. It's a 2015 Chevy Cruze but it should work uh, for the whole first and second generation guys. So it should cover from 2008 to 2020. So, how we guys know what the resistance for the coach coil is? If the resistance is not in certain okay, specs, this coil will not work. Now, what does the clutch coil does, guys? This is your compressor, okay, it has free on gas in it, okay, and when the engine is spinning, okay, it's turning and the clutch is not activated, your, okay, pulley will be just idling here. It will not activate the compressor. But when the coil, guys, okay, when the coil uh, actually activates, it pulls the outside of the coil, towards the pulley and it activates the compressor and all that starts spinning together. And if the coil doesn't work guys, it's not going to activate the AC compressor. And this coil guys, it's like a big magnet that pulls that thing. Now it has to have a certain resistance to work guys and we'll show you what it is. So what we need now, okay you can see guys on the back side of the coil here, we have a black and white cable and next to it on the inside here. Okay, you can notice that it says positive. Okay, a little bit hard to show you with the camera and this one is negative. So, the okay, right here now, we have positive and negative. We have uh, black with white is positive and just the black is negative. So, I'm going to get alligator clips, guys, and I'm going to connect to each of the wires. But you have to be careful. Okay, checking the resistance, you will not burn your compressor. But you have to be extremely careful, at least not to touch them together, because there is always some chance that you're going to damage something. So let me just make sure that I connected both of them good. Okay, I need to come in an angle and see. Okay, and okay, looks like they're in. Now, what do we need, guys? We need to get a voltmeter. Okay, let me turn this thing that way so it can stay. So this is guys the voltmeter right here. I'm going to set it to ohms. All that guys will be listed in the description of the video below. This voltmeter is amazing. I would definitely guys definitely recommend that thing. So how we're going to test it now guys. Okay, I need to get I need to get the alligator clips. Okay. I'm going to put the positive one okay on the red probe here and the negative okay on the black. And check out what we are going to get now. The resistance that we get on the meter, okay. The resistance that we get on the meter is 3.9, 3.8 ohms. So this is guys amazing, okay. The correct specs for the AC compressor should be between 3 and 5 ohms and we have 3.8. So we are about in the middle. So definitely guys a good coil there. Now if it shows zero, it means that your coil is burned. There, it's not working. And if it's anything higher than that, it's malfunctioning again. So between three and five ohms, even if it's a little bit less than three or more than five, you still should be able to be uh, able to activate that coil. So that's it, guys. Hopefully the video will be helpful to you. Save you some money. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.